Okay, I got a click, got it. Okay, and do you want to spotlight me for right uh -huh. now? Okay. And Hi. mute yourself, please. Oh, yeah, everybody mute yourself in case there's any interruptions. If you have questions, you can put them in the uh, chat and Marshall will keep an eye out for them. Or um, I don't care if you ask me questions, just keep it on the topic. If you have questions about something specific other than what I'm talking about, save it till the end, please. I don't want to get off on a tangent because I will get off on tangents anyway, because I'm not very heavily prepared here. But I am going to demonstrate tonight, I'm going to show you three table saws that I have. Table saws only. I'm not doing scroll saws. I'm not doing chop saws. I'm not doing uh, miter saws. I'm doing table saws um, tonight. Um, so the and any opinions that I give, because I have a lot of opinions, they are totally my own and they do not reflect mini cyber club or name. They're not opinions from them. They are totally my own uh, opinions. Now I have to get my camera back on. So I got to log back in with my phone. Oh, don't you know now I can't, oh, because I'm on messages, not emails. Huh. Sorry, it is. All right, here I go. It's me. Is my iPhone logged in yet? I didn't do that. Oh, no, it isn't. I don't think it says Barbara's iPhone. What does it say? Oh, no, it doesn't. I don't know what it says. Anyway, let's spotlight my other phone, my phone, if I can find it. Oh, there it is down at the bottom. It just says Barbara. Oops, did you spotlight it? No, I lost it. I had it and then I lost it. Oh, there it is. Ah, there it is. All right. Trying to make it bigger on my screen. How do I do that? There. All right, this is my saw. Uh, this is my best, the saw I like the best that I have. And it is a Burns, B-Y-R-N-E-S saw. You uh, have to log into the Burns website uh, to get it. And uh, it's not sold by Micromark or any of those things. Um, I've had this saw for about 15 years. You can see how worn it is. And I have marks, I have tape on here for something I did, et cetera. But this is the saw. Um, it has um, now, it, this uses a four inch blade. This is a four inch blade as opposed to a two inch blade. Can you see the difference of the blades? Because the other ones I'm gonna show you are gonna be two inch blade ones. This is a four inch blade. And I get them from the Burns company. Um, I use it like this with a, 
Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Well, I can't find it. I had it here. Now it's not here. I'll show you that later. It's my rips, my rip thing. I don't know where it went. Huh. Anyway, I use a sliding table. This is my sliding table. It was made specifically for this saw. Uh, you can get a saw from Burns. I mean, you can get a sliding table from Burns, which will be adequate. But this one was made especially for mine because each one has a little bit different measurements. When you make a sliding table, the important part of a sliding table is these pieces, they're ridges that are ridges that are added to it that fit into these grooves right here. And that's what, and you want it to fit exactly, not too tight, not too loose, so that it will slide easily and straight. You don't want it to have much play, you know, going wobbling side to side or your cuts aren't gonna be straight. This is very precise. Um, this was made for me by Jeff Packard, who is Debbie Young's husband. So he is really good at this. And it's, you can see that I have had a lot of accidents with this because you can see here where I've gotten it uh, caught on the blade. I've lifted it up or something when it was going and it cut the plastic, but that doesn't matter because it only matters what fits in these grooves as to how straight it cuts. The reason I like the burn saw is, first of all, it's not terribly noisy, but I like it because this saw blade is straight. Uh, a lot of saw blades, oh, I don't have one out. These saw blades are straight. If, if you look at your saw, a lot of saws have offset saw blades. One, one blade goes a little bit to the left, the next one goes a little bit to the right, the next to the left, the next to the right. I get a much straighter, consistent cut using a straight blade, and that's why I like it. Um, there's nothing wrong with the offset cut. I mean, they cut fine, but it's a little trickier when measuring to if you want precise size and things like that. Let me see these other blades I have. Are any of them offset? Yes, these the two inch blades I have are more offset. I don't know if you can see. Oh wait, Helen, can you see that? How they go a little bit to each side? Yes. Yeah. So the blade on here does not do that. Um, so this saw has a switch right in front here. Let me, yeah, I'll show it to you later. And, uh, and adjust this, a blade height adjustment. It does not, it's not a tilt saw. So I cannot tilt the saw blade to do an angle. I can do angles a certain way, but not always. I always use, all right, Debbie Young tells me I saw, I handle the saw backwards. She, she, <laughs> I put my measurements over on this side. Oh, excuse me, on, on this side. She does hers over on this side. And so it's just very different. So what I do to get an exact angle an exact right measurement is I, I use this kind of ruler that has an end. The, the measurement goes right up to the end. You know how some of the rulers have a space at the end before it starts the one? Don't buy those. Don't buy them. They're not good for measuring in this. This has this, and this has eighth inch or eighth inch, sixteenth inch. And on the other side, it's got 32nd inch and 64th inches. Uh, so I really like these, these uh, things. I get them from, um, I'm sure you can get them other places, but pretty much I get them from Pete and Pam Borum who are smaller than life company online. All right, so 
let's say I want to cut a piece of wood that is four inches wide or three inch, let's say three inches wide. So I put this, I put my, I put this in here. I measure three inches. Can you see? I don't know if you can see this that closely. I'll get my other camera out so you can see it. I make it so the blade is right because my cut's going to be on this side. So I put it right on the three inches. So it's, let me get my other, just a minute. Now I've got to set, I've got to turn this on, on my, I have different cameras here to show different things. So this will have to be. Okay, here I can get up closer, you see, then my, all right, see where I have the blade right on the three, I have it right to the side of the three. So when I put this wood in here, it's going to cut, wait, yeah, it's gonna cut it right on the three inches. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you get it? So what I do is I put my, my ruler in there and then I have a jig. This is called a, a form of a jig. It's not a glue jig. A jig is anything that helps you make things over and over again the same. So this is a stop. So it, this is a piece of plastic that's cut in a square. This one's like about a one and a half by one and a half or two by two square. And then it's attached to a clamp. And I put this clamp over my sliding table and I put it right up to the ruler. Barbara, we can't see that. You're we off can't. camera. Um, oh, wait, are you not seeing? You're not seeing the, oh, you know what? I have to share the screen. That's the problem. I'm not sharing the screen. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong place. Oh, this is so complicated. Now I got to get back and share screen. Where do I share screen? Huh. Okay, I'm going to unspotlight. You no, know, I have to take me off spotlight. Sorry, there's too many adjustments here. I forgot about sharing because you didn't see the other measurement I did either. I see it on my screen. You don't see it on yours. Uh, okay, I'm trying to figure out how to get, how, can you take me off spotlight? And then I need to get to my Zoom meeting there. Oh, there. Okay, where's the share? Here it is. Share. Okay, do you see that now? We see your house. You see my house. You don't see what I'm sharing. You don't see that? Oh, shoot. How do I do this? That's what happened before. Yeah. You have to click on the screen you want to share. Yeah. I have clicked on, on it. <laughs> I know that. I can't get rid of the house. That's my background. And you cannot see this, huh? So I need to share visualizer. Oh, I don't want to share that. No. Oh, here, I didn't even anticipate this problem. I can't remember how to show the vision, how to. Sorry, I've got to play around with this. How do I get away from that house? Stop to share. Okay. I can't remember how I did this before when I've used this camera. I can't get my phone any closer. 
to the uh, tabletop. I wonder if I can enlarge it. Well, let me. Okay, this is not working. So you didn't see any of that where I was using the camera, did you? We saw the the ruler. You did see the ruler. Yes. Up close, up close. Um. Uh, well, we could see. I could see the three. Oh man. So I think the other thing would would show all right. I think just go ahead with that. Okay. Well, maybe I better be on spotlight then. Huh. Okay, you are. I'm I'm trying to. I'm I, I've got okay. you on spotlight. Okay, now you see the rule, you can't see, oh, the ruler, but you can't, can you see the three? Yes. You didn't see it up close though, right? Well, not real close, but I can see that it's a one, two, three. <laughs> I think it's just the area where the camera is adjusted to. I think yeah. if you refocus the camera. I cannot up. bring my phone any closer and my other camera is not working and I don't know. Can you why. bring it nearer to your hands? Can you bring it, the, if your hands were in the center field, we'd be able to see everything you're doing. We can see no, them now. No, you can't really yeah. see, it's too far up. I can't get it any that's closer better. because the stand. No, that looks better. We may that's be able good. to see it the stand is, uh, The stand is too high, but anyway, okay. Well, anyway, I'm putting the clamp on here. Oh, it was really undone to screw it up. Make it really tight because if you want to duplicate the size of what you're cutting, you know, and then I just put the wood up against that and turn on my thing. Push it through. And I hold the wood on both sides if I can. And there I have a three inch wide thing. Okay, so that's, and I can cut several, I could put a bunch of pieces of wood in here now with this stop here. Oh, you can't see it. With this yeah. stop here and um, it, if I put other pieces in it, we'll cut it to the same exact width, you know? So, Oh, I'm really bummed that I can't get this better. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, that's how you duplicate pieces and make them exact. I know I've used this visualizer camera before on here and I can't remember now. It's been so long. I don't remember how it worked. Okay. Yeah, so that Barbara, if you just slide the table towards the the bottom so that we can see what the stop looks like we can almost see it now yeah it, that's it. oh that is okay it. see it's this this is what it is it's it's a piece of plastic or you can use a piece of wood and it's attached to a regular clamp now this one was made with somebody drilled a hole and put a screw in there but you could glue it but you've got to be sure it's square and will sit squarely down on your surface here. Because if it's not squ real square, then it's not going to make a straight cut. But you just put it there and clamp it on. You can also just get a piece of wood and use the regular clamp and clamp it there and use it as a stop. That's the important part of making multiple cuts of the same exact size. You don't want to go along and mark it with your pencil and then try to cut it straight. It, they will not be the, all the same size. You've got to have a stop. Does that make sense to people? Yes. Oh. Anyway, me. that's all there is about that. Um, I don't know where I put my rip piece. And I did want to show you that, but I'll move on to a different saw right now. Oh, 
Okay, I'm moving my camera. Don't get seasick. Move my camera over here. The trouble is I can't get these saws close enough to get both ends of the frames. Okay, this saw is a PREAC. You've probably heard of a PREAC at some point. I don't think they're made anymore, but I know I was gonna show it because Esty has one. She bought it someplace and, excuse me, I'm brushing it off. Um, so she wanted it demonstrated, although I think she's figured out how to use it now. This saw has a blade right in here. It's just a little blade. This is just a two inch blade like this. Oh, excuse me, like this, as opposed to that four inch blade I showed you earlier, which was, well, it's not that, I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's over there. I have a table I'm going around, so I go from place to place here. Anyway, here, here's the four inch blade and here's the two inch blade on top. So you see how much smaller it is. So it's not gonna cut very deep wood. It's only gonna cut smaller wood. Now, I also have a sliding table for this one and it's gotta fit in this ridge here to be straight and slide. But this is the easiest way to cut, you know, to cut multiple pieces. Excuse me, goes this way. No, it doesn't, it goes this way. Why is that thing there? Huh, that's really uncomfortable. Oh, I know why. I'm gonna move it. This is a, a stop. This one's got a built-in stop. This came, I think Pete Borum made this sliding table. And see it slides here and it's got a stop that I can move to cut pieces of wood. So let me get another piece of wood and cut a piece of wood on this little baby. Now this little baby is not gonna cut much thicker than about maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe, and it's gonna struggle with an eighth of an inch. So let's say I want, now when you're measuring here, you need to look for a blade that is offset because I'm cutting on this, I want this to be the size I want on this side. I have to have the blade going that way because that's going to be, I have to look for a blade that's pointed that way and it's a little hard on an offset blade. Anyway, so then I put it up, I'm gonna do one inch. Now I put this over there, the one inch, tighten the, Stop, there are all kinds of ways you can have stops. You could have a piece of wood and clamp it on. You just don't want it to slide while you're cutting. So I can turn this one on. And do you know earlier when I haven't used this saw in several years. And so I went to turn it on earlier and I could not find the switch because it's on the cord. <laughs> I looked all over this thing and then I finally found it. Okay. Well, it's, this thing is annoying, but anyway. It does a very fine cut. And that rattling is this thing on the side that needs to be somehow probably tightened or something. Anyway, so I cut a one inch piece of wood, very straight, very clean. And it's very nice. I don't use this saw very much, but it is a nice little powerful saw. However, they don't make them anymore. But you might find one at a garage sale or a flea market or something like that. So that saw. Yeah, Barb, I have a pre -ex saw. It's the only saw I have and I love it. And if I have a yeah. thicker piece of wood, what I do is I cut it on one side, then I flip it over, and then I cut it through from the other side. Yes, and you can do that. 
you can do that. It doesn't always come out exactly right, but it's it's adequate for a piece. But if you're doing a kit for people, it oh. might you have to, you know, I I do the thing is I need it to reproduce because I do kits. And so I need to do maybe a hundred pieces of the same exact size. So it's important to me to have it be exact. So that's why I have my four inch saw. All right, now I'm coming over here, move my camera again to my other saw. Got to move my computer. And the cameras. Uh oh, I got to go around the other side of the table or I'm going to trip on this cord and knock everything off the table. This is not a photo friendly setup. Okay. One. Way down lower, good. All right, now you can see this little saw. You see, again, I slipped and cut this out, but it doesn't matter. This is my little micro mark saw. This again is a two inch blade and you can get it from micro mark. I love this little saw. Um, and I have a sliding table that was made for, that Jeff Packard made me for it and it fits the groove and then it fits over here. But I don't know if they have a sliding table you can buy for it. This, I dropped it and broke it in a bunch of pieces. So it's all taped back together. <laughs> and, um, but this is a very nice little saw and I can cut pieces on here too. Where's my, oh, there it is. So I get my little stop here. Oh, excuse me, knocking over my thing. Stay up. So again, I'll set it. Again, I have to find the blade that's pointing to my le my left. It might look like you're right. And I'll put it at one inch so I can cut a one inch. And I'm using a thinnish piece. These this it the thinner the wood, the easier it cuts. If you get very thick wood on this saw, I will say the preac has more power than the saw and it can cut a one eighth inch piece a lot better than this can uh, because it, it slows down, but I only use this for tiny wood. Where did I put my wood? Oh, here it is. So I set it for an inch again, put it in and there's a, there's a button here on the front and I push it. And I push it through. There you go, another one, another piece of wood that's pretty good. Um, so if turning it on and sawing is your problem, first get a sliding table, you'll feel more secure and you can set a stop or not and just keep get some scrap wood and put it through. Now this one, here's what you're gonna get sometimes on a piece of wood is this has feathers. If you gotten wood that had a lot of feathers along the edge, it's not real smooth. The preac was very smooth. This one's not, it's got feathers. So I take small scissors, which I don't have handy. So I have big scissors handy and I just trim them off, which I have to tell you is what Debbie Young does with her kits when she does when she does saw cutting and it has um, any feathers, she just cuts them off with small scissors. Don't sand it because you might change the squareness of it. Just trim them off and then it's very smooth, okay? 
Um, changing blades on my burn saw, I have not been able to change the blade myself. I've always had to call Debbie's husband to do it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do now that they moved. So this thing is driving me nuts because it's further away. All right, what I was gonna show you, and I did, I thought I, I know I brought it in, but I don't know where I did it was how to rip wood. You know, when you don't have the right width of a piece of wood, we call that when you're cutting, not cross grain, but along the grain, you call it ripping the wood. And, but I need my rip. Every saw comes with a rip fence. They call it a rip fence. And, can't find it. I know I brought it in here, but I have no idea where I put it. I can't do it right now. We'll save it for another time, I guess. A couple of things. If you're changing blades on your saw, be sure to unplug your saw. That's a safety thing because you might accidentally, I have done it, you might accidentally um, cut your, turn it on and cut yourself. Let me tell you, in my early days of saw cutting, when I had the old Dremel table saw, which is not made anymore, um, I did. I cut my thumb. I had to have 12 stitches right across the pad here. Let me tell you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. It still is mildly numb from that. And that was back around 91 or 92. So, and when I have to cut real tiny pieces and they're so close to the blade, I use a pencil to hold it, uh, hold the wood. I don't use my fingers when it's that close to the blade. I never get my fingers closer than an inch to the blade. When you turn the saw off, that's when I cut my finger so bad because it takes a minute for the wheel to wind down and stop. And I turned and got my hand too close to the thing because I wasn't looking, I was looking the other way. And that's how I cut my thumb. So you turn it off, wait for it to stop, then turn or do whatever else. I, I learned a lot of lessons using these saws. Um, anybody have questions? Did you see it well enough? I'm gonna have to practice with this camera because I couldn't get it to connect work for you guys. Don't know I why. Did. Laura has a question. Yeah, did yeah. you purchase the sliding table or did you make it? It looks like it had um, some extra stuff that maybe you added to it. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> In general. All right, I, these white plastic ones, that's it. Um, Debbie Young's husband made for me and he doesn't do that anymore. So you can make them yourself. It's just made out of plexiglass. However, most of these manufacturers Pro, do have a sliding table that you can purchase to go on them. And they will work adequately. The you think can, that Pete and Pam sell, they, they have the sliding tables for theirs. Who does? Pete and Pam, Laura. Yeah, they have a different, now what are they selling now? A Proxon? They used to sell the little- um, Preac. Preax, but then Preax stopped manufacturing them because my sliding table for the Preax came from Pete Bor Borum. Um, and that's who I got mine from. But um, now- Pete um, still sells the sliding table. Pete still sells I, the sliding 
table for the he pre-ex. probably sells a sliding table to go with the saw. Oh, does he still sell the pre act pre act? Yes, table? yes. Yeah, I got it. So if you find a pre act, if you find a pre act at a show or something, if you want to buy mine, um, because <laughs> I don't want it anymore, um, you know, you can get some accessories from Pete. Uh, but they're not available. You can't buy them brand new anymore. They are, however. Oh, let me talk about price. Let me talk about price. My burn saw when I bought it six, 15 years ago was about five or six hundred dollars plus accessories. Um, I think it's probably more than that now. It's been 15 years. So I don't know what he's charging now. The Preac was around $500 when I bought it brand new. And I've had it longer than the burn. So I've probably had it about 18 years. And my little Micromark saw, this is the second one I've purchased. They do burn out after five or six years of use. And uh, I think this is my second one. I forget how much they are, but they're between one and 200 and they're a small saw uh, and they're, lim they're somewhat limited, but they are very nice for tiny wood. And if you're only doing quarter scale, they're really good for that. And, um, and I actually have an extra one that I've never opened because somehow I ordered an extra one. So if anybody wants one, I'll look up what they cost and sell it to you and ship it to you. But anyway, that's the little, little uh, Michael Mark. Now, the other thing, the burn saw comes with a heavy base. Um, let me see. Let me try this again. I'm going to try this one more time. Hold on. Not showing, not showing, is it? No, it's not showing. I don't know why this isn't working. Oh, because I'm using the wrong end of it for one thing. What is that? It's a camera. It's a little camera, and it's really good. But I I can't remember how to use it. It's been so long. So it's not. It used to be Debbie Young's camera, and then she got a new one, and I, and she gave me this one, but I can't seem to get it to work. And I do know why. Oh, wait, maybe it's this. Is that it? Nope. I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. I can't remember. It's been so long since I used it, but it's got all the things here. I just don't know why it's not working. Let me see, I click all these things. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Huh. Okay, well, um, what was I gonna talk about there? I was gonna talk about, um, Anybody remember what I was talking about when I got to started fiddling with the camera because I wanted to show you something? Base. Heavy base. The what? A heavy the base on your saw. The face? Base. base. B for Bravo, A for Alpha. Oh, the base, <laughs> the base. I'm sorry, the base. I'm so third. Oh, see, I'm old, I'm deaf. What can I is that say? camera plugged right. in? I wondered if that so camera this is one friendly. comes. This uh, burn saw comes with a base. The rest of these have been mounted on, um, you know, <clears throat> that uh, pressed wood stuff because it, they all should be on a heavy base. All your saws should be on a heavy base. 
uh, it makes them more stable and easy to use, makes them heavier to carry and move. But if you have a saw that does it isn't on a heavy base, you need to get it mounted on one. If you have a handyman or a husband or a, you know, somebody who knows, or if you know how to use a drill and a screws, you can, they all have a, a things on them so you can mount them to a base. Other questions? Okay, I don't know if this has been helpful to anybody, but that's my saws, that's my three table saws. And I, I definitely would have, for, for me, I, I require a four inch blade and a two inch blade for the things I cut. And if you go, oh, I also wanted to say, don't go to hardware freight and buy a little cheap saw. Uh, you won't be happy with it. It won't cut smooth. It won't cut even. I've heard too many. There's too much wobble in it. You've got to be sure your blade is squared. So a cheap, a really cheap saw is not a good idea just because you can find it. Okay, that's it. I'm done. You can stop my video. We'll go to organization and uh, how do you- Why don't you stop that one and then try doing another one? Okay.